Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with lemon pepper sweet potato crisp. That's right, I am very excited to be sharing my new favorite sweet potato side dish. And I can't decide what I enjoyed more, the incredible textures or the amazing flavors. So I'm going to call it a tie and there's no winner, which is fine since everybody loves a tie. All right, I think that's why soccer is so popular. But anyway, this was truly fantastic. And to get started, the first thing we need to make are some extra large breadcrumbs, which we really can't buy, so we're going to make them ourselves. So I'm going to go ahead and take this hunk of bread and cut off the crust before we slice this up. And the reason I'm trimming off the crust first is because crust does not crumb. Okay, it basically always stays this crust, and I want something here that's going to be able to crumble. Plus, the crust is already kind of dark, and by the time we're finished with this dish, those pieces might be too dark. And then once our bread's been uncrusted and sliced into thin pieces, we'll go ahead and turn it and cut it across like this. And don't worry if you have a few bigger pieces here and there, because as you'll see, we're going to crumble this a little smaller as we apply it to the top of our sweet potatoes. And then once that's been accomplished, we will transfer that into a bowl and we'll go ahead and pour in some melted butter, along with a nice big pinch of salt, plus a few shakes of cayenne just to stay in shape. And then we'll finish up with a handful of grated Parmesan. Oh yeah, the real stuff, Parmigiano-Reggiano. And once we've sprinkled that in slower than we need to, we'll go ahead and take a spoon and mix this all up until it's evenly coated. And then once we feel like that's definitely happened, we will transfer this to a Silpat lined baking sheet, and we will arrange that into some kind of uniform even layer. And then what we'll do once we have that arranged as shown is go ahead and sprinkle over our second cheese, which is going to be some grated sharp white cheddar, and we will sprinkle that over the top as evenly as we can. And in case you're wondering, why didn't we just add the cheddar when we added the Parmesan? Well, that's a good question. And the reason is that finely grated Parmesan will actually stick to those buttered pieces of bread, whereas the larger, heavier grated cheddar will basically just fall to the bottom. But using this method, it's gonna go over the top and melt down and into that bread once it goes in the oven, which is the next step. So once that's been cheddared, We'll go ahead and pop that into a 375 degree oven for about 20 to 25 minutes or until it's a beautiful golden brown and looks like this. And even though this stuff is pretty crispy right now, as it cools, it's going to get even crispier. So all we need to do at this point is let it sit while we move on to prep our sweet potatoes. Oh, and while it's cooling, do not do this or that because once you start, you can't stop. So we'll just leave that be, and we'll move on to cut up some sweet potatoes, which as you can see have been peeled. And when they're this big, I like to cut them in thirds, so I have two pointy ends and then that large section in the middle. And then we'll go ahead and have those end pieces using kind of a rocking motion with the knife, since sweet potatoes are very dense, so you want to cut carefully. And then once that's done, I'll go ahead and cut one piece off the end like that, and then the next piece we can cut into two or three, depending on how big you want it. Speaking of which, I don't really care how big you make these pieces, as long as they're all about the same size, which of course is so they cook evenly. And then as far as that larger middle section, we'll go ahead and have and quarter those. Or if they're really big, you can cut them across in three pieces. But bottom line is we're gonna to try to match the size of the first ones we cut. And then what we'll do once we've safely and carefully cut everything up is go ahead and transfer those into a mixing bowl. And then what we'll do once we have those bowled up is grate over the zest of one lemon, after which we will cut that in half and squeeze in the juice. And of course, when you see a recipe that calls for the zest and the juice, always zest first and then juice. And if you're not sure why, try it the other way around. Okay, it will be significantly harder. And yes, lime would work here as well, but lemon and black pepper go so well together, that's why I go with the lemon. But anyway, after the juice is in, we'll go ahead and sprinkle in some more salt, as well as a very generous sprinkling of freshly ground black pepper plus a few more shakes of cayenne, just to stay on brand. And then last but not least, we're gonna finish this off with some melted butter. And then what we'll do is take a spatula and toss this until everything's evenly coated, at which point we can transfer this into a buttered casserole dish. Oh, and do yourselves a favor. As soon as you have everything tossed and coated in that butter, transfer it immediately into the baking dish. Because what'll happen if you stop and wash your hands and move the tripod and change camera angles, that butter's gonna cool off and congeal and look all clumpy like this. 
Okay, you see that? Yours is not going to look like that. But don't feel bad for me. It's going to be fine. I'll just have to give mine a toss halfway through the roasting. Which, by the way, is not a bad idea, whether your butter clumped up or not. And yes, I just spoiled the surprise of the next step. Since what we'll do once we have that transferred in and distributed evenly is place these into the center of a 375 degree oven for about an hour or so or until very, very, very tender. And how we know is we're going to test with the tip of a knife and it should slide in with virtually no effort. So those were perfect. And yes, if you're doing this for a big holiday meal, all this can be prepped ahead, the potato part and the crumb part, and then you can just put it all together when the timing's right. And for that, we will go back and break up our crispy cheesy crumbs. And as we place these on, I think we want to give them a nice pressing down so those jagged shards of cheesy crispy crumbs sort of adhere to those sweet potatoes underneath. And by the way, in hindsight, I wish I had crumbled these up a little smaller, and you'll see why at the end when I'm enjoying some of these. But anyway, we'll go ahead and transfer over our crispy topping. And like I said, we'll give that a nice firm pressing. And then before this gets finished in the oven, I decided to grate on a little more cheese, which I thought would maybe sort of glue the crumbs together a little bit, which really didn't work. But on the other hand, more cheese. And that's it. This is now ready to finish off in the center of a 375 degree oven for another 15 or 20 minutes or until everything's beautifully brown and hopefully looking like this. And that's it, this is now ready to serve. But before I do, I like to take a barely damp paper towel and very lightly and carefully wipe those smudges off just to make it look a little nicer. Although don't press too hard or you will get burned. In fact, now I'm questioning whether I should have showed you that. But anyway, it does look nicer with a clean edge. And speaking of looking nicer, I went ahead and finished up with some freshly sliced chai and that's it, my lemon pepper sweet potato crisp was ready to enjoy, which we could do right away hot. But here is some great news, especially if you're doing this for Thanksgiving or another special occasion dinner. I think this might actually be better warm or at room temp, since I find all the flavors come out even more pronounced. But also, when you do a cheesy, bready, crisp topping like this, it is actually, believe it or not, crispier once it cools. And if you've ever made Parmesan crisps, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So I did let mine sit and rest for a while before I served some up. And then after taking a few contractually obligated pictures, I grabbed a fork and dug in. And that, my friends, both texturally and flavor-wise, is just a magnificent bite of food. The only slight issue is that next time I'm going to break up that topping a little smaller and push it into the potatoes much deeper so that we get a little more adherence. Okay, that way we wouldn't have to do as much work getting everything on the fork. And yes, I used the term loosely. It wasn't exactly work, but a little bit smaller would have been a little more user-friendly. And then as far as the taste goes, I have absolutely no complaints. This was perfection. Okay, we have those soft, starchy sweet potatoes with the tanginess of the lemon and that little bit of heat and sharpness from the pepper. And when you add the extreme savoriness of that crust with that little touch of bitterness you get when you cook cheese crispy, it was just an absolutely tremendous combination of tastes. And of course, if you want to use different cheeses like Pecorino or maybe a Gruyere instead of Cheddar, go ahead. I mean, you guys are after all the Chuck D's, of which cheese. And this technique should work out just about the same no matter what you go with. But anyway, that's it. What I'm calling lemon pepper sweet potato crisp. I absolutely loved everything about this. And whether you're going to make it for a special occasion holiday dinner or just for some random weeknight supper, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, in